Hello, good afternoon, Godfather and Gorney podcast. Let's jump right into it. I, there's two topics actually in college football I want to talk about. I told you about one of them, which is the interconference transfers and what Lincoln Riley is doing to Chandler Morris. Um, but the other, let's talk about George Pickens because that's big news. Um, yeah. You know, ACL done. Uh, don't know when he's going to be back. And you know, this was the year for Georgia with JT Daniels. George Pickens was very, very instrumental in a lot of people picking them to push for the national championship. Their defense is going to be very good. But again, it goes back to problems at wide receiver. Um, they've got Burton and some others, but this is really just devastating news. And people won't care if, you know, if it's injuries that causes Kirby to not go to the playoff or not win a national title because they just see the recruiting numbers. So what were your takes originally when you heard it? I, I hate to say this because Georgia fans are going to hate to hear this, but have we seen the last of George Pickens in college football? It was my first thought that he'll rehab from this. He'll train and he'll go into the NFL draft and he'll answer the questions there. I don't know if he's going to come back and play. Um, but yeah, I mean that if you're talking about a team that was sort of not destined, but at least headed toward a playoff run, the perfect timing with Alabama switching quarterbacks and switching a bunch of players, at different positions, you have all your guys coming back and everything's ready to go. And then this happens. That is just obviously bad luck for pick, you know, terrible for Pickens, just awful news, but really bad luck for Kirby smart. And do they have the 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 playmaking wide receivers to, to allow this to happen now? I don't think it gets done without Pickens on the field. I don't know. I had him, uh, I just wrote Tuesday. What's today? Wednesday? Wednesday. Yeah, that, I, you know, the 2021 20, NFL draft is, is loaded. 2020 was loaded at wide receiver. Uh, 2021 loaded. And next year was a little bit light. And, and I had Pickens as the number one wide receiver for the 2022 draft already. Uh, with guys like Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave and Ty Fry Fogel and others um, up there as well. But, you know, he's got his draft stock to think about now. So let's say he does rehab. I, I can't do math. I mean, it's a year rehab, you know, usually exception is that nine months, but, you know, it, it, it takes you into November. I mean, he's, he's pretty much done. Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe. For a playoff run for the SEC championship come back, may, maybe in that time range, but that is really stretching it. I don't think anybody that's going to talk to him about his NFL future is going to really support that. So we'll see. I mean, they do have some guys, Zakiris Jackson and Jermaine Burton, and I do believe Demetrius Robertson is coming back for the 15th year. In, 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 yeah. And but I, you know, Pickens was was special. We all know it. That big outside threat that you know, JT Daniels obviously was going to love. This does hurt in a big, big way. Yeah. And it changes the landscape of college football a bit. I mean, when you have an injury like that, you know, it's not a quarterback, but if you're talking about the most important player, that's a non quarterback on a playoff contender, you know, you could certainly make a case for Kennedy Brooks at Oklahoma or uh, I don't know, Justin Ross, who's coming back at Clemson. Um, you know, this past year, Najee Harris at Alabama and, and George Pickens was needed to make a run. Now, offensively, they'll be better than they were last year because they had quarterback issues. But uh, I don't think in any world that he rehabs in time and then rehabs quickly and in time and then just says, oh, OK, let me get back and play in the playoff. You know, he's going to be focused on getting ready for his his pro day. The combine should be back next year. And and all the millions that he can make. So, you know, and this is going to lead to, this is going to lead to, should you play your stars in spring football? Right? Yes, you should. But I mean, isn't you that going to come fear, up? Right? I mean, it's in this day and age. Isn't that going to come up? You know, I don't know how the, how the injury exactly happened. I don't know if he was being tackled to the ground and in in five guys going after him or how, however it happened. But you can't live in fear. You play a, a physical contact sport. You have to be in peak physical condition. You have to get your offense working. You have to do this. You have it was to do a it. non-contact drill. You know. Yeah, that's that's those are the those are the ones that are even worse. 
Right. But you know, it's going to, I just, I just, you know, and I don't think we're talking about this in the future, but remember a few years ago, we never even thought about kids opting out of bowl games. Right. Right. You know, so I, now, you know, a couple of years from now, you know, Jalen Smith is the, he's the poster, the poster child for, you know, opting out of bowl games because he was a top five NFL pick, uh, blew out his knee against Ohio State, dropped to the second round, lost millions. Now he got a great second contract, so he recovered, but he could have lost everything. Um, you know, that George Pickens could be the poster child for, you know, skipping the spring or going light in the spring, or I could see it happening in three years. So we'll, we'll see, you know, if this, my spider sense went up big time when Jalen Smith got injured. Yeah. That this is going to change a lot of things. And the same thing happens when I heard this. Um, now, again, non-contract drill. He could have you could have blown out his ACL, you know, uh, leaving class. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. But but again, uh, we'll see if that that comes. But th there's another issue, too. I want to I want to rant on a little bit, which is, you know, Lincoln Riley. So so Gary Patterson's a, a straight shooter. I like Gary Patterson. Um, and he was asked, you know, about his quarterback competition, Max Duggan and Chandler Morris. Uh, and he said Chandler Morris has not been released from his letter yet. Um, and that's from Oklahoma. And Lincoln Riley confirmed that <clears throat> this week and said, yeah, I don't like interconference transfers. So we're holding this up now. Anytime you see something like this, usually lawyers get involved and usually the teams acquiesce. Um, first of all, Chandler Morris. Yeah. Yeah. Dying on the Hill of Chandler Morris <laughs> is not the best. Movie. I mean, unless he's changed a whole lot since high school, uh, you know, this isn't Justin Fields going from Georgia to Ohio state. This is a really not very good quarterback who got his offers because his dad was the coach at SMU and Arkansas throughout his recruiting process and Oklahoma, some reason went on him. And now they're trying to hold him up from going to TCU. He's not going to scare anybody. But, but this just speaks to the NCAA absolutely screwing the world. And, and the ACC has stepped in and said, we're allowing one-time We're allowing one-time transfers. And they didn't say interconference is not off, is is off the table. They said just we're doing it. The NCAA was supposed to do this in January. Still haven't. It's almost freaking April. Um, other conferences haven't followed suit as they should. I spoke to someone uh, in the SEC yesterday that said, you know, because I was digging around in the Henry 2020-2020 situation, and they said that the NCAA is absolutely killing these kids. So what, what yeah. I'm understanding about the Henry Toto situation is, you know, he's back at Tennessee uh to finish classes now he can't transfer because he doesn't know if the rules will be passed because it hasn't been passed yet uh he wants to go to an sec team i believe alabama yes and they don't know you know if the rules gonna pass or not so they're juggling their numbers and roster and they they don't know if they can say yes to him at this point in time and then he doesn't know if he should say yes at this point in time. So he wants to go through spring ball. But then, uh, as is his right, Josh Heupel says, listen, you get out of the portal. You can play spring ball if you commit to us. But he could jump out of the portal, play spring ball, and then jump back in. But all these kids that have jumped in the portal that have committed to other schools that are ready to play have not been approved to play. I mean, the NCAA is – this is – unbelievably irresponsible and if they came back and said no one-year transfer rule or no interconference transfer rule i yeah. mean there'd be a lot of kids who are really screwed with, based on their decision so i think what should happen is these power five conferences just like the acc should say boom we're allowing it um but the problem is you know that some of the power brokers in these conferences don't want it yeah, but it's almost like the power brokers in these conferences are the ones who are con controlling it. You know, people aren't leaving Alabama to go to no. Tennessee as much as people are leaving Tennessee to go to Alabama or Miami, Cody Brown or whoever else. So, you know, I think the just the sheer force of numbers is going to force the NCAA to allow it and be forced to allow it because the headaches 
are just going are piling up. Mm -hmm. But let's talk first about Chandler Morrison and Oklahoma. Why is it, and we've talked about this before, that Lincoln Riley could leave Oklahoma tomorrow and go coach TCU if he wanted to with no penalty, with a raise celebrated that he's doing something good for his career and and there's no problem there. But a kid wants to transfer schools for a better opportunity, even if if it's at TCU, and he's being held up by the coach. Now, if someone's on academic scholarship, they could freely go from Oklahoma to TCU and back and forth and whatever they wanted to do, and that would be no problem at all. But for some reason, kids on athletic scholarship get held to a wildly different standard than even the coaches who are leading these programs. And it's completely uh, wrong, and it's wrong for Lincoln Riley to hold him up if it was his best player on his team or one of the backup quarterbacks who essentially is going to be a backup quarterback at TCU. Yeah. And, and so here's the thing, what people say to that is this is the way it's been forever. This is the way it should stay, but that's always worked through history. That's huh? the stupidest thing I've ever heard because through history, um, you know, so many changes have been made in so many different areas and, and this is colleges, you know, essentially owning players as property, so to speak. And, and it's just awful. And here's the other part. You know, listen, I don't know Lincoln Riley from Boo. I've tried to get him on our show a billion times. He's never responded. Uh, you don't follow me on Twitter. He likes my posts when I say good stuff here and there about Oklahoma. But I've heard he's a good guy, right? Haven't heard anything bad about him. Sure. Right? He's lived off of transfers. Okay, yes. so... So now I, I get that Baker had to sit a year because that was the rule. And I get that Kyler Murray had to sit right. a year and that was the rule. And they didn't need those guys at the particular time where they transferred. Jalen Hurts didn't sit a year. Now, oh, that's different. Jalen Hurts was a grad transfer. No, it, it, just let them go. You, you went, I, I mean, you made a playoff run with Jalen Hurts as your quarterback, because he was a transfer. Just because he's from the SEC, it's, it's okay for him to be immediately eligible because you're not playing those teams on your schedule. Well, you, you will in the playoffs if you get there. So, uh, and, 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 and Jalen Hurts, the one thing he wanted more than anything on earth was to play Alabama um, to show them that they made a mistake by going with Tua. So, you know, it's just, it's amazing that the guy who's benefited the most from transfer quarterbacks by far, over the last many years is saying this and stopping a kid who is a mediocre talent at best, like at best we saw him. Yeah. There's not an arm there. There's not a lot that's going to scare you. Like if you're scared that this kid's going to beat you. And I think what he's scared of is that this kid knows the offense and he knows the defense and he knows all the ins and outs and secrets of Oklahoma that he can tell Gary Patterson the evil villain who's trying to steal Chandler Morris away. Um, that's probably what he's more afraid of than the, than the sheer talent of Chandler Morris, but just drop it. Yes. Big 12, big 10, Pac-12, SEC, everybody just follow the ACC, allow it to happen. NCAA, I don't know what you're waiting for. Uh, this was supposed to be done last, if you remember, this was supposed to be done last April and then COVID hit. So then they delayed it to January. And then they delayed it again for some reason. And I've asked people who are in the know, is this a complicated process? And I was told by people who follow the portal and who follow you know, recruiting and player personnel and juggling numbers, it's a one-time call right. to agree upon this. We are Zooming right now, right? Yes. They could do this and get it done. So it's, it's really appalling. And I know yeah, some a, coaches are really upset about this. It's, it definitely makes things much more complicated from the people that have to manage roster numbers and scholarship numbers and all of those things. And I don't feel pity for any of those people. They've decided to do this for a living and so that they have to deal with how it goes. If coaches can do it, and if the argument is that Chandler Morris is going to go to TCU and tell all of Oklahoma's big time secrets, which there really aren't any secrets, um, then why should assistant coaches be allowed to transfer schools without penalty or have to sit out a year or have to give up a, a year's salary? 
Because they're it, adults, it, Adam Gorney. They're adults. Yeah. Well, so so are the kids. They're 18 and older. So they should be able to go wherever they like and do whatever they yeah. like. They can go and to the war. the millionaire coaches can deal with it. They can go to war. What are you drinking? Uh, Caffeine-free Diet Coke. All right. That looked like beer for a second there. Like Miller Lite or something. Miller High Life? Yeah. I got uh, Purple Kittles today. I don't even know Bang. what that is. I'm still waiting for Bang to hit me up for a sponsorship. All right. Body for Coke. By the way, do I look a little thinner? Yes, you do. I was gonna. I was gonna say. I thought it was the beard, but no. See, this is what's funny about my horrible, horrible body, right? And, yes. and we'll, we'll segue into the NFL draft shortly, okay. so you can write down the minutes then. But if you want to write down Mike's horrible body right now, you can okay. do so. sixteen okay. minutes. <laughs> 16 minutes, Mike's horrible body. <laughs> so uh, I spent the winter sitting in place, not moving one bit, right? Okay. Because I didn't want to go to the gym. And normally in the winter, I go to the gym to get my steps in. And you, you've seen me on the Fitbit. I, sometimes when I'm on, I'm on. And when I'm off, I'm off. And, you know, whatever. Yeah. But you have to wear a mask at the gym. You know, you have to social distance at the gym, all this other crap at the gym. And, and the gym is like 50 bucks a month. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to the gym. I'll walk in the winter. Didn't do it, right? Because it's cold. I don't want to walk in the winter. So I sat like a fat slug in the same position for about three and a half months, right? Yeah. Gained 15 pounds. Weird, too, you know, right? Because, you know, my diet's awesome. Um. And then just uh, a week ago, I started walking again because the, the weather's nice. Yeah. Started walking the golf course and stuff like that. And I'm just looking at myself. My face is thinner. My face gets fat like within a day. If I have like a Burger King takeout order, my face uh -huh. is fat as could be. Mike, your problem for over the years has not been the exercise. It's been the diet. Oh, God. Yeah. Diet's 90% of it. Yeah. So here's the problem. I'm pretty you cut out bread and sugar for two weeks, you'll lose like 15 pounds. Well, there's no sugar in this, it says. Well, that's good. That's a but lot. But the Burger King takeout is not good. Oh, well, so here was the problem. This this is the issue. So, so you know, I partake in a cocktail here and there, and I go through stages of drinking. And Off and on, yeah. Right. Well, this winter, my buddy introduced me to uh, cordials. And the idea of a cordial... What is this, 1962? Yes. Well, yeah. we were we kind of watched Mad Men. And <laughs> it's a whole long other story. Mm -hmm. And cordials are, you know, like Bailey's and, you know, very thick wintry drinks, right? Yeah. And you're supposed to have one and relax, not a whole bottle. Right, right, yeah. That have a whole bottle, which is about 2,000 calories. Yeah. And then I'd be like, hmm, I'm hungry. Hmm. And now with DoorDash and all these other places... You I don't even have to leave. I can hit a Burger King at 930 and I can get as much food as humanly possible delivered to the house. So then I eat that from like 930 to 1030. And oddly, it all goes to fat. Weird, I know. And, yeah. and then I get fat. But what's weird is my face gets thinner the second I start walking. I, I don't get it. And my eyes with my new light. Did you set up your light yet? Not yet. They are so blue. Like I'm almost in love with myself. Yeah, I have really blue eyes too. I should set up my light. Oh, your your eyes are gonna pop. Like you won't even you won't even be able to keep your hands up yourself. Your eyes are gonna pop. So I'll let's talk about NFL draft. How about that? Okay, NFL draft. Yeah, let's uh, move on from Mike's horrible body, which is slimming down, by the way. Fifteen thousand steps yesterday. Really? That's very good. Lots of hills. Yeah, I'm back. NFL draft. Who do you want to talk about? Give me the choice. Caleb Farley, Rondell Moore, Tyler Vaughn's, Trevon Morg, or someone else. Let's talk the receivers. That they're always fun to talk about. Okay. Did you watch USC's Pro Day? I saw clips of it. Did I you see my boy Amon Ra one four five one? I watched every second of it. He's he so good in the NFL. As expected, he's bricked up, right? He measured in 5'11", just an absolute brick. He's Steve Smith is who he is, right? Yes. And that's who he looks up to. And we know he has that work ethic and passion. And so everybody says, well, why didn't he put up big numbers at USC? Well, the first year he was with a true freshman quarterback who happened to be his high school quarterback. 
Um, and they had no offensive line, and he was a freshman. Second year, he put up 1,000 yards with Slovis. Uh, and then last year had a good – I mean, one game he was in, unbelievable. But, you know, had a good season, but it shortened. So his stats aren't going to kill you. No. Uh, his height's not going to kill you. He's not a long kid. No. Um, and f- to be Steve Smith, you have to be a rare type of wide receiver. But I think he's going to go probably third round, and someone's going to get an absolute steal. Absolutely. And, and I know this is – the NFL and not high school football, but remember how good he was at the five-star challenge in Indianapolis, unstoppable, just completely unstoppable. You get him in space, you throw him the ball. That's all you need. He's going to be great in the NFL. He's going to be great. Unstoppable anywhere too. I mean, you know, he was the only guy that Elias Ricks ever said gave him problems. Yeah. Ever. And Elias Ricks pretty good. Yeah. You know? And Elias Ricks went to IMG and Elias Ricks played a lot of, uh, you know, top notch competition. And he said, Amon Ra was tough to handle. So Tyler Vaughn's ran a four, six, nine. Okay. Originally that I am not uh, that but, excited about. No, I get it, but I don't think he's going to plummet out of the draft. I had him as a fourth rounder. I think he may slide to fifth. Um, this isn't a Paris Ford situation. Did no. you see what he ran? No. You're in a four, nine, three. Hmm, that's like safe, that's like my level fast. Like Quinn Blanding, who was a great college football player, former five star, had a tremendous career. First team yeah. All ACC a couple of years. Blah blah blah. He ran in four sevens and wasn't even drafted. Yeah, so four nine is you're done. It's not going to happen. Four six nine as a six two wide receiver, big bodied kid. Now his route running isn't good. Still, never Lazy. was. What? A little lazy. He just, he's, his body flails. Yeah. And so, but I still think as a possession receiver, he's a good number three in the NFL and someone will take him in the fifth round, but you know, four, six, nine is not great. If he ran four, five, five and surprised people, cause everybody expected four, six, uh, he would have helped himself, but. Third guess- all time. I, I we, remember we were criticized or at least I was for his ranking earlier today by a certain someone that works at the company and uh, third all time receiver at USC third, third. And so he catches a lot of passes. Also, certain someone also said that you missed a camp in February because your baby was born in, in mid April. In mid April. And then we looked up the camp and it was five days before your baby was born. And then your yeah. baby was eight days overdue. Right. Yes. Yeah. That certain someone tends to, um, recreate history maybe maybe a little yeah anyway tyler vaughn's i think will be a guy who catches a lot of passes in the nfl was not going to blow anybody away with his athleticism or speed but will be on a roster and will catch the ball i don't think he'll catch a lot of passes i i will say he'll be on a roster i think he's one of those guys that's going to be wide receiver four three catch 20 passes last three four years and then get out but i i didn't see him today and say this kid's undraftable um right now rondell moore ran a 429 um and 42 and a half inch vertical which is ridiculous because he measured in a 57 and now people have him as the number five receiver in the draft and a potential first rounder and i don't have him there i think he moved from third round to second round um because of injury issues uh he's super strong super dynamic when he's healthy but uh, he's been injured two out of the last three years. So did you see his vertical? It looked like he was like floating. Did you see Jace? Oh, you probably didn't see it yet. JC Horn's broad today. Yes. He was flying. Really? It was like 11-1. Like literally was in the air for 10 seconds. Do you care that Rondell Moore only played in 20 college football games? I do. Yeah. The very, very small... Uh, sample size, you know, his freshman year, he was dynamic. Uh, and then he's injured, injured. And I also care that he's five, seven and I know people yeah. don't, but I do. I mean, five, seven targets are a lot harder to hit. I don't care if they're wide up and downfield or not than a six foot two target. His catch radius is short, smaller. Uh, he's more difficult to reach on, on passes over the middle because you can't, throw passes low over the middle because they're all going to get batted down. Yeah. So then you got to float them and that could lead to problems. So I'm not poo-pooing on uh, 
I think I have a bet with Dave Lagford uh, from the Louisville site. I think he said that Rondell was going to run sub four two five or break the record, Ross's record. Oh boy. And he also said he was going to go in the first round. Now we could go in the first round, but I this jump into round one where it's like everybody knows it's the two Alabama guys, um, Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddell. It's Jamar Chase, and then it's Rashad Bateman, and then nobody knows who that fifth guy is. I get that, but that doesn't mean that Rondell Moore is the fifth guy. I think, you know, it could be a more – I mean, it could be a safer pick to take someone who's a little bit bigger, but. And let's not get like so overly thrilled about forties. And I've actually been reading a little bit about this, about how teams care less and less about that. Henry Ruggs ran really fast and had an okay first year. Right. John Ross ran super fast and this is whatever, you know, let's, let's have the whole picture here, you know? Yeah. Well, they love fast 40 times. So, and I think Henry Ruggs can still be good. I mean, obviously we're in the day and age where you write somebody off after one year, Uh, but John Ross is just injury prone and it just, you know, four, two, two or whatever he ran is great, but just not big enough, strong enough to handle the NFL. So um, yeah, it's definitely buyer beware with a five foot seven kid. He's super strong. I mean, I don't know if he benched, but I would guess he'd still put up like 20. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh and I think I'm mispronouncing it, which is embarrassing. But Trevon Morig, I think is pronounced something different. But he's the TCU safety. Um, he ran a four five, said he could run faster, but it is what it is. But his film and his production over the last three years, uh, I think he's a top ten talent. Now he won't be taking top ten, but I think he's not getting past maybe Minnesota at 14 or in that in that range of 15 um if the if the Patriots don't take a quarterback which they should at 15 he is a Bill Belichick type of player so I thought his pro day was interesting because he didn't mm-hmm. wow anybody but that's one where you you believe the film more than anything else like an Antonio Winfield type yeah, who was undersized and didn't wow anybody, but had a great career. And again, he's got the bloodlines, uh, which is always, you know, important. But but there's been so many uh, different interesting things going on at Pro Days. I mean, you know, Aziz Ojolari, 22 reps at 225, 4'6". He's only 249 and six foot two, So he's not super long, but he might have moved to be the number one edge guy. Yeah. Um, but Quiddy Pay is going to put up crazy, ridiculous athletic numbers as well. Uh, I think Greg Russo is going to test well, too. Nobody knows who the number one edge is right now. Um, and that's probably the only position I think you could just say you'll get five different answers on who the number one edge is from five different people right now. I don't know if there are five good edge rushers or just five average edge rushers that are all going to put up decent numbers and then not super produce on the field uh, russo again one one good year you know quitty pay mm, okay i don't know about aziz ojalari is the number one guy i think they're all sort Jaylen of in phillips? that Jaylen Jaylen phillips i love medical Jaylen question love. you know they're gonna they're gonna look into his medical history because he had to medically retire from football yeah concussions have been an issue i think for him yeah so i mean you know it's one of those years where you're not going to have a chase young which you can right. rely on. Defensive tackles the same way. I mean, Christian Barmore is number one. Uh, on on, on Wuzurike, uh is number one to some, but I think those are all, you know, guys that'll go in the 20 to 30 range. And your edge rushers will probably go, the top one will probably go 15 to 20. So it'll be interesting. But uh, pro days, I love. I mean, the combine's the best, and I missed it so much, but pro days are, are fun. But these times are, I mean, they're, they're just unreliable. I mean, Master Teague apparently ran, and he's not at draft eligible, but he apparently ran a four, three, five. Which is insane because he's a big lumbering dude. There's no way that happened. Right. And, but, but again, this is the same school where Javon Baker ran a four, three, seven. And then a year later ran a four, seven at the draft. So I, 
I think it may be motivation. I don't know why. I remember Virginia Tech used to do it where they just made up numbers of pro days. Now, are these pro day numbers NFL certified or is it just school certified? Well, nothing's NFL certified, really. I mean, you get scouts there with hand times, yeah. but nothing's NFL certified because the combine doesn't exist. So some of these, I mean, Rashad Bateman had his combine run through Exo Sports and Exo Sports timed them. Huh. Oh, yeah, Rashad, I know you're paying us a lot of money. You ran a 4-8. No, oh. four, four, three, no. Yeah, it's like, oh, you ran a 2.2. So <laughs> it's 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 going to be the most, you know, just like our 2021 rankings are going to be interesting because it there's going to be so many kids that missed or whatever because of yeah. COVID. the draft is going to be super interesting because these pro days, you just don't know, um, you know, what you're getting. So you got to really rely on the film. And then you look at the film, Caleb Farley, you know, is having back surgery. So he's not going to make his pro day Friday. So he was cornerback one or two easily, right? I mean, his numbers are astonishingly good, but they're from two years ago. He opted out last year because of COVID. He was the first one to do it. Yeah. And I talked to scouts and they said, we don't care about opting out. And, and I talked to them about this right after Caleb was the first one. Um, because you know, that kid's so talented, but now he's opted out and he's injured. So you get no pro day, you get no combine from him. You get no last season. So the last thing you're looking at is 2019 game film. Do you take a shot on him or do you go on a Greg Newsom or a Jason Horn where you got more recent stuff? Um, obviously I would go on certain over Farley now. Yeah. I think it's going to be really interesting. And I think there's probably going to be some surprising picks, but more surprising slides than people expect in the NFL draft, um, you know, than, than, than normal years. Um, is there anybody, I mean, I think Trevor's going to go number one. Yeah. I think Zach Wilson's going to go number two. Hmm. Number three, I think, now there, you know, there's a. I heard today again, you know, oh, the Jets are going to go all in on Darnold, and I'll take Jamar Chase at number two, or or the Dolphins are going to take Kyle Pitts at number three, or, or Jamar Chase at number three, which makes sense because they can't give up on Tua, even though they should. Um, and then four is interesting because a lot of people have the Falcon, Falcon, Falcons trading out um, and trading back, and Carolina jumping up to take Trey Lance. And Justin Fields could slide like crazy. So a lot of stuff. Mac Jones had his pro day, wasn't happy with it, but Mac Jones is never happy with anything when it comes to his own performance. Um, yeah. You know, uh, but he's a risk as well. I don't know if anybody's going to trade up in the top 10 for him. Um, you know, Elijah Vera Tucker, dude. I mean, I think he moved ahead of, Slater, Rashawn Slater at Northwestern, he might have moved ahead of Panay Sewell. That's that's incredible because I'll tell you this, in high school, Elijah Vera Tucker was a big time project. And, you know, name offensive linemen at USC who have been well developed, you know, over the last many years. So that is a very, that is a surprising one. I mean, Elijah Vera Tucker was a very good high school football player. I think we had him as a four, right? We did. But as a surefire top 10 pick, no way, no way. So two hours ago, this is hot off the presses. He ran a 5-1 40-yard dash, which nobody really cares about that. I don't know. But he, he jumped his vertical, I believe, was a 32, which is very, very good for a 308-pound dude. Um, but I think he put up – 38 reps wow that's good 25 and it, and i watched his workout and his footwork was just awesome and i'm like you know thinking back to this kid and it's the same same way it was the notre dame kid aaron banks yeah <laughs> you remember him yeah you remember rashawn slater i mean he looked horrible i don't even remember slater at I... high school he was so off balance all the time and aaron banks was chubby yeah, had no well, muscle definition at all. Yeah, and Vera Tucker was a little soft. Soft and kind of not huge. <laughs> and now he's an animal. I but know. everybody's talking Vera Tucker like, you know, maybe 11, maybe 10 now. And, and Sewell, I think, is going to go to the Bengals at five. So I don't think Vera Tucker's jumped that high. 
but he might have jumped ahead of um, and and none of this is good for Clay Helton, you know. When when you see guys like this, I mean, they had a first rounder in the draft last year at offensive line. They have a first rounder in the draft this year at offensive line, and everybody says the problems the offensive line. Line, no problems the offensive line coach, and the offense, and that's the big issue there. So they shouldn't suck as bad as, and they don't suck. But let's talk twenty twenty three because let's talk fourteen uh, year old rankings. Yes. This is what's big exciting. meeting this morning. That was big meeting. Six thirty on the West Coast. Still dark out while the, while we're going through this. You're a hero, man. <laughs> You're a hero. I was just there. I was completely mute. I mean, I'm I'm not. I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna text you for stuff. It's stupid. Yeah, text me. Be be. I'll be the. I'll be the uh, middle. But I don't want to make you look stupid. That's why. You know the one about the DB who wants to play running back and I won't say his yeah. name. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't listen to that at all. You guys talked about it, but he's not a running back. He's a DB. No. Now, if he was a DB, DB, and he wanted to be a DB, he's definitely a 6.0. But I just think you, as the new national recruiting director at Rivals.com, need to take a deep dive into the state of Florida, which is no different than me being – the rivals recruiting director because i had to take some deep dives into florida to find some guys well when we had somebody yeah we don't have anybody so you better dive because i think florida is really good in 2023 yeah i do too i mean have you seen that kid burn it malik yeah 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 i've seen him i mean we have him respectfully high should be higher IMG, Aminal. We will see how he pans out over the next two years. Oh, by the way, I have a flight for you to take. Oh, okay, good. You're going to Bradenton, uh, home of IMG. Oh, am I? Yeah, it could be April 1st, 8th, 17th, 21st, 23rd, 26th, 28th, or 30th. Um, I'm calling it the Adam Gorney uh, Rivals IMG Day. Yes. Look at now. I just got a text about that this morning. But 2023, uh, Arch Manning, and nobody wants to talk about anybody else, but you've got Malachi Nelson better. Well, you know, Malachi Nelson is phenomenal in every way. I've never seen him be bad. He's still lean, but he's got such an arm. And he has such precision that it's hard for me to believe that there is a better quarterback. Arch Manning sophomore tape is impressive, but it doesn't blow me away to the point. If his name was Arch Smith, uh, I don't think that we would have him so ridiculously high. Not that it's ridiculous, but just high in the rankings like that. Got some mechanical issues. So, but don't forget the scoop this morning was Arch Manning's going to Virginia. I will, n- I will never believe that, and I don't think anyone would allow that. So I think I mean, it- the only two big-time players that have gone to Virginia in, in the last 20 years have been Chris Long, whose dad made him go to Virginia because they yeah. lived in Charlottesville, and they, they, he went to a private school in Charlottesville, and Eugene Monroe, whose girlfriend was going to Virginia. Go so Virginia. unless Arch moves to Charlottesville or his girlfriend decides to go to UVA, he's not playing for the Fighting Mendenhalls. Did you like my joke on the call? What was it? That he has a serious interest in Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Didn't get it. The, Thomas Jefferson started the University of Virginia. So, so why would he have a serious interest in Thomas Jefferson? Now? Well, because that's why he'd want to go to Virginia. Just because of the history? Let's talk. Uh, forget it, Mike. My jokes are just above you. I, I they, love Peter Woods. Have they ripped down a statue of him yet? I, I'm not getting into that. Oh, all right. I love LT Overton. I think he's phenomenal. Peter Woods, I think, is almost just as good. And then the two kids that we talked about a little bit, Caden Proctor. Yeah. Who's you want to talk about? He will be a, he will be. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna speak out of turn. I'm not involved, but he will be a five star, there's no doubt. He's so good. I think he's, he's so little, good. He's just a little shy on the trigger there. I hope we get to see him this spring. And I'll uh, 
do my best to get him to the Indianapolis rivals camp just so he can dominate everyone there. Is Adam Gorney going to that one? There are people. That is uh, paternity leave. How much? Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Uh, the biggest piece of garbage leave known to man. Like, when did that happen? 10 years ago? Um, when, when women started more regularly going into the workforce, I think people had needed to recognize that there needed to be someone home with a baby. To do what? Okay, Mike, here, here, here's the situation. I have a four-year-old daughter. Yeah. So she's not in school. I know. Like, all full time. Yeah. And you told me the other day your entire job is to inter entertain her all day. No. You teach her nothing. Just sort, be, just sort of be there. She giggles. And that's it. So a four-year-old girl and a baby boy. Now, who watches those kids all day long? My wife also works. And I work. Uh, nanny. <laughs> Maybe. What? You can come watch them. Where do you live? Southern California. Pretty expensive place to have a nanny. No, also so you, daycare. My uh, my sister in law's kid goes to daycare five days a week. What What do you think that costs for a, a, someone who with no children? I have no children. All right, so I'm gonna guess. And I have a friend with children, but he, his kids are you know 18 and 16 now, so I don't remember the rates. And then, and if I did, the rates are way out of whack. So I'm gonna guess, throwing it out there, to watch one kid. One kid, one kid. Okay, one kid that's this big, right? Yeah, th this girl's like three, three and a half. Oh, oh, the newborn doesn't go to daycare? No. They're too young to do that? Too young. So she's three and she's active and she talks a lot. Yeah, but you can, you know, do do stuff with them. It's like basically like pre-pre-kindergarten. I would, I would say a hundred bucks a day, $700 a week. Well, no, it's five days a week, 500 bucks a week, period. Yeah, so that that puts you at two thousand dollars a month. Right? Am I right? You're you're in the ballpark. I'm not bad then for now. Kids, right? Now you have two kids. Right. That's four thousand dollars a month in childcare. Yeah, but you live in Southern California. It's it, it's extremely embarrassing not to have a nanny at this stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Already, I mean, you've got a da daughter who's four years old, and you're still nannyless. Um, I think that's embarrassing. I think that speaks to. Um, a lot of your character and i would say paternity leave now i i do respect you because you don't take the full paternity leave no this is because you work weeks uh, flexible yeah, and you work through it yeah other people at our company have taken the full paternity leave Which and, not lift, and not lift oh and not lifted a finger to do anything nothing not even a tweet do you call that addition by subtraction, Mike? I don't know what I call that. I call it laziness. Mm. I mean, I, I, I don't even know how you do that. How do you not work or do anything work-related? You're still a young man. You need to experience childhood. Six weeks you get. Six weeks, yes. Now, like, if I adopt a child, do I get paternity? I would think so, yeah. Then I adopt a child. Or at 51, I'm still virile, I hope. So I just got to find a, a younger. There's no telling. I want to have a kid because I want six weeks off. So anyways, I don't know how we got on that paternity leave discussion. We were talking about 2023 kids. Yeah, and we can't get too much into it because the rankings releases next week. Well, I mean... I'm going to say to you that Malik Murphy is a uh, figment of your imagination right now, but Malachi Nelson is not. That's what I'm going to say to you. Yeah, Malik Murphy over two weeks has not been very good at all. So he will, if he doesn't improve over the next three weeks, he will be seeing a decline in the rankings. And that's just fair. I mean, I don't think anybody could argue that. No. Malachi Nelson is. And he's, yeah. going to, he's going to Oklahoma and he's going to you know, win the, the Heisman and be a number one pick overall and, you know, that stuff. You can see the, the progression there. And 
Quinn Ewers will go to Ohio State and put up great numbers. And, you know, Sark's a great offensive coach, but the way things have gone at Texas. Yeah. I mean, I did this, the, the history of quarterback development. Some of the names at Texas quarterback. I mean, you remember Tyrone Swoops? Yeah. Remember his sophomore film? Very good. Unbelievable. Remember his junior film? Yeah, but then we saw him in person and he wasn't exactly a uh, complete package. No, and his junior film was awful and his senior film was worse. Yeah. He was at, I think he was at our first five-star challenge. He was at one of them. I remember seeing him. Atlanta. I think he completed three of 85 passes, (laughs) if I remember correctly. But you got like Case McCoy and you got like, you know, Tyrone Swoops and Garrett Gilbert. I mean... The last good quarterback, Sam Ellinger is okay, was was uh, Colt McCoy a hundred years yeah. ago. So I'm not saying that won't change in the start, but you know, someone told me the other day, oh yeah, yeah, we don't want Quinn Ewers. Uh, you know, we got Malik. I go if Quinn Ewers made a phone call today, right? And said to Steve Sarkeesian, I want to come to Texas. Uh, there would be a text message sent immediately to the West Coast. Yeah saying hey <laughs> how you doing <laughs> can you reclassify reclassify you know what i hear is a really good school i heard usc is really good hey. <laughs> ucla is looking for somebody <laughs> that's exactly what would happen so uh i think we're done except for tv but people don't want us talking about 90 fiance anymore i am re-watching breaking bad you've seen it yes love right. it and then i'm going to start re-watching the sopranos i believe my favorite show of all time. West Wing and Sopranos are the two best shows ever written. So, so good. So good. Yeah. Um, Breaking Bad, I'm at the point where it's getting a little ridiculous. Where they didn't, they decided not to kill uh, Jesse. Um, like, And then put him in the, the cave to make it with Chained well, Up. Well, he was in the cave and then he wanted to kill somebody, some drug dealer that killed his friend and was using kids to sell drugs. And then he ended up going to kill him and Walter ended up hitting him with his car and shooting him in the head. And then Gus, the chicken guy, um, was gonna kill Jesse, but then Walter said, you can't kill him. If you kill him, you kill me, blah, blah, blah. So he killed one of his own henchmen. You remember that scene with the box cutter? I don't. I don't. It was ridiculous. It was stupid. And then Jesse went on this party trip again you know another yeah. one of rubbed out party trips uh i'm at the point where he's in mexico teaching them how to make blue nice with don Eladio. do you remember don Eladio? yeah yeah i want to talk about a great character he's only in two episodes really yeah but man i want to be that guy i'll tell you what they don't paint albuquerque as a place where you really want to go visit yeah but it's rain free 335 days a year See, that's nice. You think that's nice, but someone speaking to someone else from the Northeast, nothing's green. It's all brown. No. <clears throat> it's all brown. It's all thatched out. Yeah. It's all pretty horrible. Yeah, you don't like that. Yeah, and, and Skylar is running the car wash now, and okay. she just bailed out her, her, uh, her boyfriend or whatever you call him. Uh, from the tax the- evasion stuff? Yeah, yeah. And then he, he took the money f- that was supposed to be from his long lost aunt and and uh spent it on uh a car and but you're getting pretty you're getting to the toward the end. I am, but Don Eladio just got off ah. in Mexico by Gus, who drank the drink as well and then got sick. So now they're taking Mike got shot, Gus is sick. They're at the 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 tenth surgeon underground place to yeah. save their lives, and it's very. I don't understand why Jesse even brought them there. Just let Mike die, let Gus die, get out of Mexico, and go back because those appear to be your problems. Now, did you watch uh, Better Call Saul? Love it. See, this is the reason why I'm watching Breaking Bad because. I watched all the seasons except for the last one of Better Call Saul. Then I turned on Better Call Saul, first episode, and I didn't remember anything. So rather than go back and watch the beginning of Better Call Saul, I watched the beginning of Breaking Bad. Next, instead of The Sopranos, you're correct, I will be going to watch Better Call Saul because that is one of the best characters ever. 
Better Call Saul is the most boring show mm. of all time. Oh my God. It took three seasons to do anything. You're crazy. The writer thinks we're such morons that we're just going to sit around forever. I don't like it at all. No, I give it two thumbs down. No, no, we're sitting around. You get to see like Hector in his prime. You get to see the, 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 the Tuco. Yeah, you get to see that, but they, the they take like six episodes to get to to the, to the for them to do one thing and i'm not a guy that needs like constant action in shows i actually don't like that but my god it is so drawn out build up dude you gotta have the drawn build out build up um one thing on 90 day fiance did you hear this okay i know you watched sunday yeah and she the crazy ukrainian girl yeah had to leave and Mike dumped her and then they went to the hotel and, and, you know, they can't use his credit. They can't get in. He has to keep going back to his house like over and over again. Did you know in real life, I found this out on the Instagram, mm -hmm. they got married. Really? Yep. And they lasted less than a year and they're separated. So I don't know okay. if she leaves. Yeah. She must not leave. And that might be a spoiler, but I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. But we need a new I story. just love the part where it's like Mike is Mike is like so sorry for what I did. I'm so sorry for what I can I get the ring back? Oh ring god, back? I'm so sorry. But that ring, that ring. Can I, can yeah. Get the what's, ring her back? Name? what's her name again? Um Mike and um I can't remember her name. But he's like, Can I have a hug? Yeah. Which no is Michael. one last hug. No, Michael, no hug. No, no, leave me alone. Leave me alone. No hug. No. Can I get the ring? <laughs> Like, through the car window he's like can i get the ring <laughs> back away from the car michael no 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 why do you do this to me michael yeah but ring. ring. how about that ring and then the poor neighbor <laughs> i know she's the one that has the driver well she drives her it threw a panic attack and then they have to drive back because he forgot to give her the credit card yeah and he lives like two hours from seattle it's not like right down the road and then they get the credit card and then the previews say that you got to go to the, and they don't take the credit card. So she got to drive back. This poor woman <laughs> dealing with this mess. And I can't believe I can't remember her name. All for Mike. Yeah. Mike's a stud though. No. I mean, he lives in that shack. Actually, it, Uncle it looks, Bo did it's always cold too. and wet at his house. Didn't Uncle Bo set something up for her too? Bojangles? I think she should go up with Uncle Bo. <laughs> that'd be great you ain't dumping her right no. all right enough of this garbage all right we went long i'm sorry rivals no adam gorney on twitter adam gorney on instagram who still hasn't stopped retweeting every offer he sees i don't retweet every offer i just have to do that because i need to catch up with them later to put them on the profile um, you can like them I don't like liking them though. Then you go to your likes and you see what you liked and they're all right there. Uh, also a good plan, that I guess. That way you're not retweeting everything. So we'll have a social media breakdown session later. On Instagram, Adam, Adam Gordon, how many up to? I'm I'm I've moved, I've tripled my followers in the last week. I am now up to 312. I'm following 613 slowly building on instagram all right good tiktok tiktok i am much more of a long time listener first time caller kind of guy you don't have a tiktok yet no but i i do follow it and i i have to tell you there are some funny things on tiktok to watch very funny things and what the, about do you watch the one with the uh <clears throat> guy the, they do the water bottle with the egg and then yeah. they splash the water and then smash the egg on the guy's face yes now I, Find that funny for some weird reason. I saw right. one where the egg goes into the bottle, but it's not going into the bottle, right? Yeah. And then they look over the water and then they splash the guy and so then smash the egg. Are they putting the egg behind the water and it looks like it's in the water? Yeah. They're they're just like putting the egg down and, yeah. it, and then they're and like, where's like, the egg? And then they and water, then, egg. Yeah. I'm going to do that to my wife when she gets home. I, I think it would be funny. You should tape it. Can you do that to your wife? Sure. I mean, this podcast sucks, so we need something. Let's yeah. do that. I'll try. You would kill me. Like, I would be dead. And I've lost all this weight. 
in my face. I don't want to die. All right, everybody. Uh, follow me on TikTok, Rivals Godfather. Follow me on Instagram, Rivals Godfather. Follow me on Twitter, Rivals Mike. Follow me on Facebook, at Mike Farrell Sports. Do you know what your handle is on Facebook? Uh, I don't, no. Are you on the press app yet? <laughs> no, I. there's only so many hours in a day. Are you on Clubhouse yet? Clubhouse, I will not go on. I think I'm on Clubhouse at Rivals Godfather. So uh, Clubhouse me. I don't know what it is, but I'm on it. It's um, an invite only like chat app. Yeah, I'm in a CEO group and an OG group. I don't even know what it means. But the press app, I think I'm Rivals Mike. I'm going to be on more apps by next week too. So I'll let everybody know. So thank you for listening. Uh, take care. God bless. Godspeed. Love you, Adam Gorney. Bye. Bye.